Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast on how to review your QuickBooks company file at year end. There's certain things you should do right off the bat when you're getting near the end of the year and even shortly after the end of the year, certainly before you submit your books to whomever is preparing your tax returns. One of the first things, of course, most people know to do this, most people do it without even thinking about it, is to run your profit and loss standard. That goes pretty much without saying. Now we're in a company file which puts us into a date in the future, so let me just back this date up to January 1st of 2015, and it gives us this sample Rock Castle construction company files profit and loss statement. Now it may seem like it's enough just to run the profit and loss, and you may even be in the habit of running the balance sheet, which is great. However, there are some additional things you should do. Probably the first thing would be to run a previous year comparison on the profit and loss, just to make sure things seem to be lining up correctly. And the way we do that is we're going to go to Modify Report, Previous Year, and you can even show the dollar and percent change. What this does is it lets me know right off the bat if things look about right because usually from one year to the next things don't change much and the other thing is to the extent that there is a change for example in this case there's a substantial increase in sales from the current year over the previous year I should see approximately proportionate increases in the other accounts throughout the profit and loss so if I went up 171.8 percent then my expectation will be that everything else went up pretty much in line with that jumping down to cost of goods sold I can see that it's in the ballpark it's 157 percent that means that our profitability should have increased substantially which it did because my revenues went way up but, but they went up by more than the cost of goods sold so scrolling through this I can start to see very quickly if things look like they line up right a lot of times what you'll find is something looks way out of whack and as the owner of your company you have an idea better than you might even realize how things should look so when you're going through this you're going to start to see when things jump out at you for example I would look here right away and say well wait a minute why was there no payroll in the prior year and suddenly there's payroll this year now again you know your company so you're going to be able to explain something like this you might say oh last year we were just starting out we didn't have any employees yet we were subbing all the work out and then of course by the time this year started we had done so well that we hired people so that would make sense but the point is you should be able to explain this so scrolling down just looking very quickly at the sample company file looking for things that look about right this is a little curious to me that equipment repairs would be the exact same number I would want to look into that and of course you can double click any of these numbers to get an idea of what makes it up and it looks like we have a quarterly payment here on an office maintenance contract for equipment repairs so in that case it does in fact make sense and I can drill into the prior year too to make sure that that is exactly what we're looking at and sure enough it is so again you want to be looking for things that jump out at you that don't look right normally you wouldn't expect to see the same exact amount from one year to the next things change usually even on a contract like this there'd be something in there for an increase from one year to the next but maybe these guys gave our rock castle company client a break so again going through just using logic the next thing I would do getting rid of the prior year comparison and this is one of my favorite analysis to do is to come over here to the columns and total it by month as you can see right away what that does is it gives me a very nice monthly analysis and I've got a full-length class actually uh, that that's called a uh, um, what story are your numbers telling you how to read your financial statements like a book and and that's what I do when I do this part of the review is I actually first jump right down to the net income and I look at the trends and I see okay we started in January we we're profitable profits increase they drop a little and I start scrolling across and I look in a case like this I see okay for the most part everything looks fine every month was profitable some more so than others so then I might want to take a look at the ones that were less profitable and start seeing well what happened did sales drop or did expenses increase sales did drop in this case by about five thousand and if I look at my total expenses those are about in line so that would explain a drop in our net ordinary income or net income for that matter <clears throat> but I am looking at this and thinking well expenses were about the same sales dropped by five thousand how come our net income only dropped 
by about 3,000. So again, we may want to take a deeper look into this. And sure enough, the difference is in the cost of goods sold. There's your $3,000 right there, which makes sense because with the drop in sales, there should be a proportionate drop in cost of goods sold. So again, this is how I analyze this. Let's go over to the balance sheet real quick. You can also total this by month, but before you do, you need to go into the modify reports. By default, the balance sheet only gives you one date because the balance sheet by definition is really just a snapshot. It's a moment in time. Here's what things looked like in terms of the assets, liabilities, and equity. So what we want to do is go to modify report and let QuickBooks know that I do in fact want to look at this over a range. And in this case, it's got that accomplished for us. But you want to make sure because a lot of times these two dates will show up as being exactly the same. As long as I know I've got that in place, then I don't need to go out of here even. I can go right here under display columns by and I can choose month clicking OK. Again, we're looking to analyze the trends here. First of all, one thing that's always interesting to me is to look at our cash balance. And how did that do? And it's not a bad idea to look at that in terms of our income. So if I know that income was way up in one month, in theory, the following month, I should see a corresponding increase in cash. So for example, in September, I have 40000 in gross revenues. In October, it jumps up to 60000 I would be curious to see if my cash jumped up in October or even more so in November I should say because October is when the sales increase but remember we have to allow time to collect so if in September to October my income goes up by 30,000 I'd like to see from October to November perhaps an approximate $30,000 increase in cash and I've got that a little less it's not always going to be a hundred percent because remember with an increase in sales there's likely an increase in cost of sales which means some of that money had to get spent on my direct costs and, and the overhead as well overhead may have gone up so it's just a rough approximation but again you should be able to look at this and tell yourself what you'd ex you would you would expect to see and then you should be able to go back to it and and see that or see something like that and if it if it doesn't end up in line with what you would anticipate then you want to take a deeper look and see if you can explain to yourself why why isn't it what i expected why did cash not go up if it if that were the case when my sales went up what happened and you might look further down the balance sheet and see for example in fixed assets you might see oh fixed assets assets jumped up by thirty thousand dollars so that that means we must have spent something there it's not reflected in the P&L which brings me to the last part of the analysis which not a lot of companies do in my experience especially smaller businesses which is run your statement of cash flows and not the cash flow forecast that's something else company and financial <coughs> statement of cash flows run this and what this does is it takes my net income and that reflects everything that's accounted for in the profit and loss. All the income minus all the expenses, of course, give us the net income. The rest of the statement analyzes changes in balances on that balance sheet that we just looked at. So this accounts receivable negative 71,000 does not mean that my accounts receivable balance was negative 71,000. What it means is that my accounts receivables increased during the course of the year by 71,758.54. And the reason why it's negative in a case like that is because if accounts receivable increased then we have to reduce the net income by that number in order to arrive at what our cash balance is because what it means is it's money that's reflected in the net income that we haven't collected yet if accounts receivable increased it's a little hard to get your head wrapped around this stuff but I do want to show it to you because it, it's important as a business owner to understand or begin to understand how to analyze this stuff and as always and I mention this in every video I'm always available for private one-on-one training if you'd like to learn more about this or any other topic that I cover. So these are the, the statements that I look at when I'm looking at a client's to do a year-end review and, and basically what you've just seen is a, is a brief overview in terms of how I look at it. Once again, get in touch with me if you'd like additional training on this. Give me a call at 866-945-8070 or email me seth at nerdenterprises.com. I hope you're having a great holiday season and an absolutely fantastic day.